Welcome back to the vlog. Today is a 10.30 a.m. session, a $300 buy-in at the 1-3 game, and right off the bat, the dealer passes me some cards, and I look down at Ace-King offsuit on the button. You know, they're going to play her limps, and the hijack, with only about $80 total, makes it 20 She's a well-dressed lady with lots of jewelry, a casual player, betting one-fourth of her stack. Definitely tells me that she has something strong. I'm going to try to get her whole stack in. I raise her up to 60 Action folds back around at her. She immediately puts her whole stack in. I make the call. We're going to a full board run out. The dealer slides the burn card under the chips. So many times you get ace king and you end up with ace high, but there's an ace in the window. I'm feeling great about my hand. Two clubs, but I do have the backdoor king of clubs just in case I need it. The turn is a 10. The river is another club. My ace king should be good. I show it and she flips up ace queen offsuit. She probably felt great just like me when that ace came out, but the king body slams the queen and the dealer sends the cards to the crematorium. Moves the button and ships me my first pot of the night up to 382 right off the bat. Always feels great to get up at the beginning of the session. We have a fantastic session today, and we're going to get into it right after you drop a like on the video. It takes a fraction of a second. These vlogs are a lot of work, but with a little bit of love from you, it's all worth it. We're going through a little bit of folds. Going to check out the stack, 382. And on the button one more time, the dealer tosses me a hand, and it turns out to be the losing hand of the player in my previous hand ace queen offsuit on the button again trying to choose my spots in position which is easy to do when you pick up ace queen we have a new player in seat one who limps and i'm going to take a page out of my opponent's book i make it 20 the small blind defends the hijack throws in 17 more we're headed three ways to the flop 63 in the pot and the dealer puts out 10 high three clubs on the board but no club in my hand i unblock clubs which isn't good but this is a pretty crappy board for a lot of ranges if they don't have a good club. And I think if I don't bet, I'm going to give up this pot. So I throw out a Hail Mary bet, 35, try to take the pot down. Now the player from the last hand that I beat has moved over to my left. She looks down at her cards and she isn't folding. She makes the call. So immediately my plan goes awry. Unfortunately, I look over and she only has less than 40 in her stack. It's going to be hard for me to push her off the pot. The turn comes out. The eight of hearts, she checks immediately. I'm just going to go for it. I ship her all in. She makes the call instantly. I'm in big trouble. I need at least an ace or a queen to have a chance. It's a three of clubs, taking my chances from slim to none. And she flips up her hand. King 10 offsuit, top pair, no flush draw. But yeah, there's no way I'm going to get her off that hand with her short stack. There's a valuable lesson here, and that's don't push pots where you have very low equity, especially if it's multi-way. And especially if one of your opponents has a short stack, it's basically a fruitless effort. I could have just lost a 20 preflop, but instead I burned in an extra $75 or about a fifth of my stack. Down to 287, but things get better when I look down at pocket kings in the cutoff. The low jack opens for 15. I'm going to put in a 3-bet, and I go for a really measly small 3-bet of 35. 3-betting is difficult when you have such a small stack size, but I think I should have gone for at least 4x, made it at least 60. It folds back around to the hijack, and the hijack isn't content with my bet. He shoves out 100 Telling me he wants to go big. He wants to play for stacks. He only has about $60 behind. And I think we all know what's coming next. There's only one thing to do with my hand. I'm all in. And he calls right away. Of course, you're always worried about aces in the back of your head. But I'm never folding with his hand. Shoving it in happily every time we go to the flop. And it comes out with an ace in the window. Now ace king beats me. A whole bunch more hands beat me. Jax beats me. The turn is clean, but I'm still worried about that ace in the river brings in the spades. I brace for impact, but he shows pocket queens. I flip up my kings, and thank goodness he had queens because I really couldn't beat anything but that specific hand. 5.07 to my stack, 45 minutes into the session. I've already seen so many premiums, and I look down at another ace king suited. Absolutely beautiful in the big blind. The under the gun limps. The small blind makes it 17, and I'm going to put in a nice size 3 bet this time. I make it 85. When you're out of position, you want to go for a larger sizing. My goal here is to make all the other hands fold except for the small blind and actually get heads up in position this hand action is folded back to the small blind an older gentleman who doesn't want to call he puts in a four bet to 158 this is an older gentleman now i'm nervous his range is very condensed to premium hands aces kings queens probably not even jacks maybe ace king suited the very best hand I can hope for is queens, but I'm still losing to that. But then again, I have ace-king suited. It just seems like suicide to fold. All in. All in. Bad call from by me. <laughs> if anything, you, I can beat it, maybe ace-king. I have queens. Yeah. A very bad omen when he says he can beat ace-king. The flop is a blank. The turn, I can't even win with a 10. And the river comes out an 8, sealing my fate. Just like that, I lose a coin flip, and I lose a very large portion of my stack. Coin flips are a necessary evil in tournaments, but in cash games where you feel like you have an edge, coin flips completely erase that edge. I top back off to 300, in for 417, and I go on a little bit of tilt. Open jack six of diamonds for 20. Luckily, I scoop the pot. 
go through a few folds, and then I pick up 10-6 of diamonds in middle position. The player to my right opens for 10, and I tilt talk myself into a 3-bet, make it 40. This is absolutely unnecessary, completely outside of my range. This is not sound play, and I get a call from the lady to my left. Cold calling the 40. Action folds back around to the original better. He throws in a call. We're headed three ways to the flop. 124 in the pot, and the dealer puts out an eight high flop. One diamond, backdoor diamond, backdoor straight drop for me, but a trash board for my trash hand. The original better sends action my way, and when the tilt does the talking, the chips often do the walking into the center of the pot. No exception here. I go for a big bet of 70. Just trying to drill it through, steal the pot. Absolutely not factoring in my hand, the board, my opponents, just blindly firing like an underfed Russian soldier shooting his Kalashnikov above his head over a hill. Completely oblivious to the Ukrainian howitzer around that comes hurtling at my face in the form of an all-in. My opponent goes all-in. I immediately put him on jacks, tens, pocket eights. This is such a dry board, I'd need running cars to even have a chance. And to make matters even worse, my opponent shipped in the chips that were in my stack just a few hands ago. I realize I'm getting way out of line. I need to take it back a notch. I fold my hand and I try to recover. Top back off for $111, in for $527. And I look down at ace four of clubs in the small blind. The middle position player limps. So does the hijack. So does the cutoff. I open it to 15. The middle position calls. So does the hijack. The cutoff comes along four ways to the flop, 67 in the pot, and it comes out with an ace and a club. I have to be careful, though, because my four is as weak as seven days. I check the action. Going to take it slow with this many people in the pot. The middle position player makes it 18. I make the call. Everyone else folds. The turn pairs the board, eliminating my kicker. I'm sitting with two pair king kicker. I checked my opponent once again. This card should slow down the action, and it does. He checks back. We go to the river. It's not going to change much unless it's a king, but it comes at 10. I stick to the plan and send the action to my opponent. There are not a lot of hands that can beat me. If he had a seven or spades, he would have bet the turn. We're doing a lot of chopping, but he also could have worse hands that he might want to bet at, try to bluff, and so I'm going to check call, and he does put out a bet. He goes with 60, which seems to be a large bet, but you have to remember how big the pot size is. This is only about a one-third pot size bet. The way I've played this hand has kept it simple, kept his range wide open, kept the pot small. I'm not facing any re-raises, which would be extremely difficult to play against. I make the call, and immediately he says, good hand, takes one more look, and then tosses it into the muck. Caught him going 60 in the school zone. That is not allowed. If I would have bet out on this hand, and he would have been determined to bluff and re-raise me, it would have been very difficult to play. This was low effort. Easy peasy. Scooping in the cheesy up to 421, trying to get back to my buy-in of 527. And maybe pocket eights is exactly what I need to get back to even. Action folds to me. I open it to 15. I get one player. The player in seat five makes the call. Everyone else folds. We go to a flop. And it's pretty good for pocket eights. Comes nine high. My opponent, who's probably a very sweet grandpa to a lot of grandkids, probably won't stand up to pressure if he doesn't have anything. So I continuation bet for 20. Betting has three purposes. A bluff, protection, or value. I'm protecting my hand. And I'm value betting against ace five, ace three suited, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, and draws. If you look at his likely range, he's got about 25 to 30 combinations of those hands. Now compare that to pocket threes, pocket fives, pocket nines, ace nine suited, 10 nine suited, and eight nine suited. Many less combinations, plus I'm heavily blocking the eight nine suited. He's not scared though. He makes the call. We go to the turn. It pairs the nine. A great card for me to see. Much less likely he holds a nine. And I'm going to stick with my plan on the flop. Bet for protection. Bet for value. I make it 30. This is when I see something interesting. My opponent doesn't look at his cards. He doesn't look at the board. He looks over and stares at my stack, not for one or two seconds, but for like five seconds. And then his head drops and looks at his stack like a magnet pulled it that way. I've noticed when people drop their head, you'll see it. They like drop their head like it's heavy and look at their stack. It means they have something. And he goes for a bet, a very sneaky bet, a min raise. What does he have on this board that he would want to min raise with? I immediately think of the OMC 10 commandments. Number three is never bluff. Number six is only bet when you have the goods. And number seven is make your bets with your strongest hands. Extremely obvious. For example, limp raise with pocket aces. I immediately realize my opponent is just probably holding a nine. I fold and I was wrong. He's not holding a nine. He's holding pocket fives. Pocket fives flop the set. Turn the full house. Very nice hand, sir. 356 my stack down about $200. And this has been an up and down rocky session. Haven't really gained any traction. I did go on to tilt once. I'm starting to get a little frustrated. So I decided to take the L, preserve my chips, and take what I have left to the cage to turn them into cold, hard cash. In for 527, out for 296 for a loss of 231. Thank you so much for watching. Kato out.
I hope you enjoyed that video. Here's two more to enjoy. The only question is which one are you going to choose? Left, right, left, right. They're both great videos. Maybe two of my finest works. The decision is in your hands.